Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's stand tonight in the house and begin our service. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. We're just going to seek after God for a little bit because we've got a lot that we need to pray about. We've got a lot that we need to, to reach heaven for tonight. We need to be in prayer for the people down in Florida right now that are going through that terrible storm. We need to be in prayer for the Davis family. We need to be in prayer for Sister Coward. We need to be in prayer for all the sickness that's going on out in the world and here in our community. There's just a lot that we need to touch heaven for tonight. So if you would just help me tonight, if you would just step out in faith just a little bit, if you would come forward, if you've got a need in your body, if you've got a situation that you need God to take care of, just step out in faith a little bit because I want to let you know something. I know the healer. I know the one that can take care of the situation. I know the one that can deliver you. I know the one that sits on the throne, that has dominion, that has all authority on this earth. I know the God that I serve. I know what he is capable of, and there is nothing that is too big that he can't take care of. So if you would just pray with me tonight, if you have a need, come forward. Step out in faith if you would. We've got people that will pray for you, that will pray with you. We, can, we still believe in laying on the hands and letting the sick recover. We still believe in that. We still believe in being apostolic. We still believe in letting our faith be demonstrative. We still believe in letting our faith show the works of God. So if you would, just pray with me tonight. God, we just want to come to you right now just to seek after you, Lord. God, there is so much turmoil going on in the world right now that we need we need your help, Lord. God, we need you to, to just come down from heaven for just a little bit, God. One touch from heaven and one, one touch from you, God, and it's going to be taken care of, Lord. God, I pray that you would bring comfort to those that have lost loved ones, God. Lord, I pray that you would bring health and that you would bring prosperity to those that need it, Lord. God, I pray that tonight as we come together into this place, Lord, that you would just help us to unify, Lord, to be able to come together, to have peace, God, to be able to worship together, to worship you, Lord, with all that we've got, Lord. No matter what's going on in our life, Lord, we know that we can put you first and that you're going to take care of it, God. Lord, we just want to pray tonight that you would help us, Lord, that you would help us be successful, that you would help us continue to be faithful, that you would help us in this journey, Lord. God, I pray that you would just deliver us tonight, that you would show us the way, Lord, that we can lead. You can lead us, Lord, and we're going to follow you. In Jesus' name.
church, we really do owe it all to him. God, without you, we are nothing. Lord, without you, we can be nothing. God, you are everything to us, Lord. You are, you are everything. You are holy. You are wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. God, there are so many ways we could describe you. Oh, our words, our words cannot describe how you truly are, Lord. God, you are wonderful all the time. Amazing. this time we're going to have another form of worship and giving is worship before we go through all the ways to give and get into the prayer I just, just want to try to build a little faith we recently took up our move the mission offering which is a, a leg of the United Pentecostal Church International in the youth department. It's the fundraiser leg. And they support missionaries here and abroad, Tupelo Children's Mansion and the Lighthouse Ranch for Boys, which this church is very dear to. And as a section, the Southeast Missouri section of churches in the Missouri district, over the past couple years, we have given record offerings, year after year. About three years ago, our goal as a section was to raise and donate, if I remember right, about $10,000 as a section, and that is several churches. We blew that out of the water. Two years ago, our goal was 15000 we blew that out of the water. Last year, our goal was 25000 We blew that out of the water. This year, our goal was $30,000. And not all the numbers are in yet, but we're just shy of $33,000. So I want to let somebody know that I know that gas is high right now. I know that rent is high. I know that food is high. I know that everything that we spend money on is high. But it hasn't stopped anybody from giving to the kingdom of God. It hasn't stopped anybody from trying to further the kingdom. You know, we can't all go abroad, but we can fund somebody that can. We can't all go into the inner cities, but we can fund people that can. We can't all buy a missionary a vehicle, Brother Blake, but we can come together. And as a group, we can. We can see souls saved. We can see people making it to heaven because we give. And this church is a large giver amongst every fundraiser that the UPCI does. And if you would like to contribute a piece of that tonight, I just wanted to let you know that we are great givers, but I feel like that every year we give more, every year we sacrifice more, and every year God honors it more. So what are we going to do now? We can give, we can give faithfully, we can give sacrificially, and we have many ways to give here at the River Bend. We have Givelify. It's an app you can download on your phone. If you've never used it, you just search our church. And then you can get on there and you can donate that way. We have PayPal. If you go to our website at riverbendpentecostals.com, you can also, if you're listening out over the airways, you can send cash or checks in the mail to Riverbend Pentecostals, PO Box 477, here in New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. And if you're here, we have another way that you can give. You just text this phone number right here, and it's going to give you the ways that you can give through that. So we have many ways many ways that you can give and we have people that use every one of them and we have people that believe in furthering the kingdom of God and that's what we're going to do tonight but first we're going to pray a declaration of faith over this offering so tonight if you would pray with me I believe in this prayer I believe that that it works I have faith to believe that everything in here is going to come true and it has so upon the authority of your word I have given and it shall be given unto me pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. Now bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, 
benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and give, church. kids come up here and line up across the front over here and river been ignited if you want to come on up here on this side
Church, we're about to do something that is of the utmost importance. Is that we pray over this generation right here. We pray over the generation to come so that they can carry on the faith. They can pick up the torch where we leave off. And that they can take it and run with it. So if you would, just stretch a hand forth to these young people up here and let us know that we're, let them know that we're behind them, that we're praying for them, that we want them to be successful. We want to see them faith, faith filled, that their faith is high. We want to see them going forward in the kingdom. So God, we just want to pray right now, Lord, over these young people that are up here. Jesus, we just want to declare that you would just surround them, Lord, with your love, that you would surround them and protect them, God, everywhere that they go, Lord, everywhere that their feet may travel, God, I pray that there are angels camped round about them just protecting them, Lord. God, I pray that, that the evil one cannot touch them, Lord. I pray that you would just allow them to be able to walk through this world in safety, Lord, that sin has to flee whenever they come in, God. I pray that they are not tempted. I pray that they don't give in, God. I pray that you would, that you would shield their eyes, that you would shield their ears, that you would help them through their daily living, Lord, being able to make it through. God, I pray that you would just help them, Lord, every day. Help them receive the words that they're going to hear tonight, Lord, that they will grow and that they will understand, God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Violet. Y'all just follow in after me. on up here, Pastor, and deliver that word from heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated if you'd like to. Amen. Grateful for Everybody today that helped to minister to the Davis family and all their in-laws and outlaws and appreciate the team that worked so hard on the meal. It was incredible. Um, the food was almost so good. I thought about calling Brother Cody and Pikey and tell him, just teach Bible study tonight. <laughs> I feel like the Lord wants to reveal me something in a dream. Nah. But we had, we had did uh, make a difference in their lives and grateful for everybody that, uh, that contributed to that. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. So if uh, I, I, we probably only need like five or six handouts for those that weren't here last week. That's evangelistically speaking, but I, I made I made enough for everybody, I believe, because I know y'all take so many notes last week that you need a fresh one this week, Amen. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna just hit this review real quickly, and uh, then we're going to. Uh, well, I, I tell you what, I got something I want to unpack. I never thought of it before. Matter of fact, I just wrote it down a few minutes ago. So be one of those things where we wing it just a little bit. But I'm happy you're here tonight. Good to see everybody. It's uh, so good to see Jackie and Lila back in church. My goodness, man. And uh, I can't tell all her business because I'm a little bit scared of her. But uh, that's right, Josh. You know what's up. But let me tell you what, she's been through the mill since we saw her last. And uh, I'm surprised if, uh, if Brother Jackie doesn't start taking better care of you, we're going to we're gonna have to do something. But, yeah, she's been through it, but I'm happy y'all are here. I'm, I'm just glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. And uh, we'll remind you that tomorrow night at 6.30 is Recovery Supper. And at 7 o'clock is our recovery class, and it's an incredible meeting. 
And uh, if you're so inclined to be there or you know somebody that's struggling with anything, anything, if you know somebody that washing machine tore up and they've been depressed about it for four or five weeks, tell them to come to recovery class. Amen. 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 It works. It's incredible. It, it blesses me, helps me. I need it. I need it. Uh, holiness. Absolute conformity to the character and the will of God. I'm on my way to being like him in every way. Separation from sin and the value. So I leave behind sin and the world. Separation from sin and the values of the world. But I'm on my way to God and his will. So I'm dedicating my life to pursuing God and his will. And there is a sharp contrast between the way of the world and the way of the followers of Jesus Christ. And, and I think it's safe to say that that line of separation is um, stronger and more necessary today than it's ever been, ever been. So um, activation of holiness or activation on the journey of holiness begins with a changed mind. And uh, so there's a clear and present danger to becoming so uh, attacked by sin that you become desensitized to sin. And uh, so we didn't learn anything worldly from Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing of the world's behaviors, customs, etc. did we learn from Jesus Christ. Not his life nor his teaching reflect any semblance of worldliness we take off the old man put on the new man by being renewed in our minds and we've put we are told to keep climbing stay hungry and keep going to new and higher levels keep looking for new ways to dedicate our life to jesus christ new opportunities not less okay and uh you have to you have to want to be holy don't fall into it. You don't mistakenly get that way. We have to first desire to be holy. Okay? And what that means and what that is will be revealed to us as we pursue the righteousness of God or the righteousness of Jesus Christ, if you please, rather than ungodliness and worldliness. Now, Romans 6, 15 and 19 in the New Living Translation, I read it all to you. I will not do that tonight. But we were told that we got to give ourselves as slaves to righteousness. Where we get to the point where we tell God, I'd like to give up my ability to choose to be bad. I want to completely surrender and do whatever you would have me to do. And in the process, I become holy. So less influence of the world and more influence of the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the things of God, that is the process by which I become holy. It's like uh, you give a little kid a bath. They go back to the mud hole and get dirty just as fast as they can. How many of you have told your kid before, and I just washed your hair? <laughs> okay, well... We cannot show up to church on Wednesdays and Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays and get our praise on and get our conviction on us and repent and keep going back to the mud hole and hope to be holy. All right? We got to make some changes in what we allow to influence our lives. All right? And the way we do that is by our mind. Uh, you are what you think. Uh, so uh, we, uh, the scripture says, Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I talked to you about, we have about 500 unintentional and intrusive thoughts every day. So about two hours of our day is spent thinking about things we don't want to think about, but it makes its way into our mind anyway. And I told you, sure enough, the devil knows this, and he knows that we have some What's the word that I'm, that I'm looking for? We have some uh, discretionary time in our minds. That means there's about two hours out of the day 
that we don't control what's going on here. Let me tell you what the devil's looking for. An open door when our guard is down to creep in. But you got to recognize it. All right? You got to recognize it. But the trouble is, is if you do that enough, this is that being inundated with ungodliness. For instance, if you hang out with somebody that criticizes everybody and everything all the time, you cannot just decide to not be a critical person. You are what you put out what comes in. Okay? So, we talked about the law of exposure. Do you remember that? The law of exposure. Psychologists and others who study how our minds work talk about the law of exposure. The law of exposure is the mind absorbs and reflects what it is exposed to the most. Okay? So, the Bible says in Romans 8, 5, and 6 in the New Living Translation, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. Okay? For instance, if, fellas, if you constantly think about all them Hollywood women, you're going to find yourself not loving your own woman. You're going to talk yourself into doing something stupid until you find yourself one day hanging out around the back door squalling, rubbing your eyes because you fell in love with a lie. You can't, don't even give place to that. One of the things Craig Grishel says in his book, and I love it, I, I practice it. He said, my wife is the most important person in the world to me. I'm married to her, I'm committed to her, and that's how it's going to be from now on. That's a declaration that he tells himself because, listen, the devil wants your marriage. He wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy your family. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Is there anybody in the house that doesn't like the idea of your life being full of life and peace rather than death? I hear you. I'm in too. But I, I really want to try to have it this way. And I really want to try to do it this way. It ain't working. All right? It's, it's kind of like I, I felt to say this today. I, I have some people in my family that are big drinkers. Not um, Coca-Cola, Mad Dog 2020, and et cetera, okay? You, and they like to say, I've been drinking so long that it don't bother me. Use a lie. <laughs> All right? It's like turning up a fifth of Jack Daniels, Brother Larry, and saying, I ain't going to get drunk. You can't, Brother Ronnie, you can't decide. But I'm going to drink a fifth, but I ain't getting drunk. So why do you think that you can watch people having sex who ain't married to one another, doing drugs, running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and it ain't going to affect you? Same principle the same principle okay we got to stop thinking about listen listen holy ghost filled people got to stop allowing their lives to be influenced by unregenerate people who are miserable all right just because they got 27 million followers does not mean you need their influence in your life grow up Excuse me, I didn't mean, did I say that out loud? Okay, we, can't, we got to stop some of that nonsense because it make you fall out of love with your whole life. And the next thing you know is you're despondent. I'll never forget it. Oh, Lord, I'll never forget it. It breaks my heart to this moment to watch a young lady who I felt like, I felt like 
was one of the most beautiful women in our whole town. Screaming and crying and bawling to me about how ugly she was. Because she didn't have the figure that they have on TV. You say, you say, well, she just ought to be stronger than that. When you sit there and eat Pringles and drink Diet Coke for hours watching the Real Housewives Marathon, you can't help but be affected by it. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to bust your bubble, but there ain't nothing real about it, including their bodies. I mean, really. Now, I don't want to get sidetracked on that, but it is things just like that that inundate our minds until an apostolic woman will look in the mirror and say, I'm the ugliest person I've ever seen in my life. And you know something, Sister Sheila? They think it. It's not, they're not lying to themselves, Brother Larry. They really think it because they have inundated their minds with lies as to what the world says is attractive. And I don't measure up. They don't either. They don't either. I'm going to quit. Let me tell you something. Them filters ain't your friend. I'm going to see you this and raise it another one. Apostolic holy women got no business duck-facing on social media. <laughs> why are you doing that anyway? I mean, really, why? Because you saw them do it. That's why. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. But here's the deal. I'm never going to stop being susceptible to the devil bringing lies to me. Now, you know what the truth is, so you have to continually repeat that truth to yourself and back it up by the Bible. Okay. Now, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. We have to intentionally fill our minds with the truth. Make the law of exposure work for you. So allow yourself to be inundated with positive, godly, and holy things. Come to church and as many church events as possible. Read the Bible. Listen to and watch true and holy preaching and teaching. Read edifying books and articles. Listen to music that edifies God rather than the world and the things of the world. Increase godly fellowship and breaking bread with godly people and go to special events and services. Those are just a few ways to make the law of exposure work for you. Okay? You with me? So let's go to the Word of God. I'm so excited. 
because I feel like we're fixing to make hay. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 in the King James Version. It says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought into you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So uh, everything we're talking about right now is pointed toward the coming of the Lord. Not just being accepted somewhere. Not just even feeling better about ourselves. And I'm thankful that you do that. But ultimately, we're looking at the coming of the Lord. All right? We're having a, a introduction to uh, Holiness 101 because it matters when I go to be with him. Okay? Now look here. Gird up. I'm going to get my suit coat here because, man, I got to make this. I got to. I, I may just hang out here a little while. I, I might just hang out here a little while. But in Bible days, now we'll talk about it. Men and women wore robes, but there was a big difference in them, and you could tell it from a distance. All right? Because that's somebody's going to say, well, they all wore robes in the Bible. They did. But there was a difference from them, and you could tell it from a distance. That's historical fact. But to gird up the loins of your mind. So gird up the loins. In Bible days, they'd wear a robe. And when it got time to go, men could. Women couldn't. It was against the rules. Men would take their robe and, and gather it up like this and tuck it in their belt, okay? Woo-wee. Because they didn't have trucks and cars and automobiles. Rarely did they have a horse or a donkey or a mule. They went everywhere on feet. And when they gird up their loins, mean you are ready to move, ready to go, and you're removing something that, You see, I can't move as good with this around my legs as I can when I gird it up. This ain't a sin. Are you, now, y'all ready for this? Look here. Look here. Gird up means to remove the hindrances and obstructions. It is a term used to describe a man preparing to move. Ready to move. All right. There ain't nothing wrong with the robe. But when he got ready to go somewhere, he girded up because he, what he put it in, that belt he put it in, they called it a girdle. That's why they gird up. Roll up your robe, gird it, and it would make like breeches. B-R-E-E-C-H-E-S. Now, the, what do the scriptures say? Take me back to the scripture because I want them to see this. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. We, I, we got time to wait. It says, gird up. So if I told them, gird up your loins, you understand what it meant? Yeah. Now it says, Gird up the loins of your mind. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. I ain't never seen this before, but it's there. I love it. Look at here. That robe that he gird up is not sinful. As a matter of fact, it's necessary. It's a normal part of his everyday attire. But it's getting in the way of him going to the next level. What exactly is it that needs to be controlled in your mind that's stopping you from going to the next level? 
It's not sinful things. Matter of fact, it's a part of who I am normally. But God is doing something in my life, taking me to another place. So what is it? You're the only one can answer this. Pastor can't just start preaching against it. What is it that gets in your way every time God tries to do a new thing in your life? See, I thought holiness was just all about right and wrong. You know what? I have got to make a decision that I'm going to go on with him. I have this written on my board in there, but Brother Robert Tisdale preached it because of the times a couple of years ago. He said, uh, don't pay any attention to criticism. Don't get distracted by critics. It's the price you have to pay for sailing out of mediocrity. People taking shots at you is a price you have to pay to go from where you are to where you want to be. So what is it? What is it? You have to ask yourself. You need to probably write it on your paper. What happens to me every time through the preaching, or you know, you know what I'm talking about. The power of God moves in a dynamic, dynamite way. And the Spirit begins to work on you and starts preparing you for new things and new ministry and new desire. And there's like, you know, you feel like, whoa. And then you wake up on Monday morning. And you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. Like, What took you there? What it like, man? I I really oh I got a burden. So we'll just use I got a burden for children's ministry. Oh I got a burden. I know God wants me to work with children. And I wake up Monday morning, and all three of mine seem like they belong to the devil instead of me. <laughs> and I just got delivered from a desire to be in children's ministry. Now, I, I'm being a little facetious, okay? I'm being a little facetious, but you see where I'm going with this. You know that God's working on you. And every time, Holy Ghost, help me. Woo, Holy Ghost, help me right now. Every time you get in a quiet place where God can talk to you, this is where he takes you. So what is it that you need to get in order in your life so that you can finally go to the next level. Say, so, oh, well, I got to stop sinning. No, that's not, we're, we're at enough. We're at another level of holiness. Because a matter of fact, the book does say, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. There are some things that you don't, for, just for instance, say that you got you a 66 Chevelle that you love more than you love anybody in the world. And you spend all your extra money and all your extra time on it. And God tells you, remember like Brother Richard said, God tells you, I want you, this is going to happen. Y'all don't act like I've lost my mind. God tells you, I want you to give $5,000 to move the mission this year. And then you tell God, can't do that and take care of my baby too, my 66 Chevelle. So I have to make a decision. Is it wrong to have a 66 Chevelle? No, it ain't wrong. The Lord probably likes them. They're the cool cars. But I have to make a decision. Are, are you with me? Exactly what is it that's holding you back? It ain't the devil. He ain't got that much power. It ain't another human being. They don't have that much power. You know what it is? Cha-ching. I got to get my mind. So the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind.
when it's time to move, when I'm trying to grow or I'm trying to go, what are your hindrances and obstructions? Where does your focus tend to go when you want or need to hear from God? That's a question you need to answer. But I want to let you know something. These things are only hindrances and obstructions if you desire to be holy. If you don't have a desire to pursue holiness, they ain't a problem for you. They will only become a problem when you desire to move somewhere in the Lord. And why do you think so many people stay where they've been for years and years and years and years? Because they're not willing to pay the price of girding up the loins of their mind. Okay. Then it says, man, I hope I can paint this picture because it's a powerful one. So gird up the loins of your mind. Y'all ready for this? Be sober. Be sober. Now, I, I want to try to unpack this just a little bit. Y'all know what that word means by any chance? That's exactly what it means. I like this definition. Free from the effects of intoxication. Say, listen, I know good and well somebody in here just thought, well, I don't drink, so I ain't got that problem. Like, move on, preacher. I gave that up. You can, yes, sir. There you go. I can't do that intoxicated. You say, oh, I, we're not talking about, we, at its very basic, anything that takes you to a place where you don't control yourself anymore, to any degree, at its most basic, it's going to be drugs and alcohol. But it's also going to be sexual desire, new stuff. Or whatever that is that stops you every time. Exactly. And, 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 hmm. Hurry up, because Fran's got her hand up. Well, well, and I skipped her. Well, I have a choice before the liquid goes into yes. my mouth. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. When, I, when I'm in an environment and in a situation that, that that often happens in, uh -huh. I've got to practice and, and uh, exercise yeah. self-control well, to stay out of it. Okay, you're exactly right. Go ahead, Fran. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, 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 an elder pastor that I knew who was a good man, y'all stay with me now, we got this under control. A, a pastor that I knew who was a, a good man and a godly man, but he pastored in a den of iniquity. I'm trying to dress this up. And he had people come in off the street. It was in an, an urban area, a city. And he had people come in off the street. Okay, so I'm going to talk about being intoxicated. I'm going to be really plain. All right? He had people just show up. Didn't even nobody have to invite them. They might just be bopping down the road and hear the music and say, I believe I like the sound of that, and just show up. So this gal comes in for church guest and she ain't hardly got no clothes on 
And what she did, you could see through. And no underclothes on. And a man's white T-shirt on. And she comes to the front and wants prayer. Now, this is kind of funny, but this kind of proves what I'm saying. The pastor, he was about that tall and about that big around, too. One of the coolest old guys you'll ever meet in your life. He was an incredible man. I loved him very dearly. But he went to pray for her, and he just put his hands down. He came over about this side, and he got his wife and said, come here. And she said, what? He said, I need you to pray with this girl. She said, why? He said, I can't keep my mind on what I'm doing. It was true. But that's what it means to be intoxicated. He didn't ask for that. You you understand what I'm saying? So we got to be aware and not be afraid to say, time out. Yes, yes. We will have any number of things. You can have, listen, you can be super duper spiritual, messages in tongues, living for God, walking in the Holy Ghost, and be broke as a joke. And you can come into $10,000 and won't come to church for a month. And then you will convince yourself, I deserve it. Because I've been broke for so long. What happened is you got drunk on some money. We can't. That's part. Gird up the loins of your mind and get your mind clear. Be free from intoxicants. Because you can go to Angola right now. Anybody ever heard of Angola? Angola. I've been there, scared me to death, telling you the truth. I sat in the death house. You ever seen a movie called Dead Man Walking? I stood there with my hands on that table. Same one that they shot that old boy with the lethal injection and killed him. Scared me to death. You know how many fellas are there for the rest of their life? And they'll tell you, I don't even remember being there. We robbed a liquor store, and we killed three men, and I don't even remember being there. Oh, we're sorry. Since you don't remember it, ain't nobody telling them that. He shook my hand. He said, I don't even know what a whopper is. I've been in here so long. Don't even remember being there. Why? I was high. I was drunk. Be sober. I think, now, y'all forgive me if I'm wrong, Miss Jane and and Brother Shannon, Brother Ronnie, and all the others. I think this is a pretty powerful scripture to say, well, we need to follow the steps. I believe it. You know I'm a believer in the steps. But the book says I can't get high. I can't get drunk. Huh? Huh? Not if I want to do something for God. Not if I want to be used of God. All right, brother, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, when you're talking like you're building up the loins of your mind, if you are a young leader or maybe a young pastor who is just coming into the kingdom, you know, we have power and we have the anointing. We got to remember why we're here and what God has done. We get to the point of being so mature because we have lived the top. Right. Some of this show up in church and get saved and just go on our way left and right, left and right. We didn't have to carry the load. Right. Well, you know what, God? I got everything anyway. Why don't you go go to church? No, you're right. You know, we got to keep control and thought of uh, who we are, what God is here, and we don't want to go back to that. The, we want to keep, like you said, we want to keep moving forward. We want to go forward. Oh. So we can keep moving forward. Yes.
So, so the question we need to ask right now is why would I go back there? Not with your eyes wide open. You never will. All right, never will you go back. The only way that you'll go back to the vomit is if somebody makes the vomit look like a T-bone steak. You say, oh, that's, a, that's what the book says. It's like a dog going back to its vomit. We wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that in your right mind. You know, Josh, that, that life stole from you, killed you, deceived you, turned you ever which way but loose. Wasn't nothing good coming out of it. But after I sit back on Easy Street for a few months and don't have no problems, if I don't follow the word of God, I'll convince myself, I got you. Just like the children of Israel, they come out of Egypt. You know, why, why did they come out of Egypt? Do y'all remember? I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. They came out of Egypt because they cried out to God and said, we're miserable here and we need help. But just as soon as they got out, you know what they said? They said it. We've been better off. You know what? They were intoxicated by being thirsty. They were intoxicated by being hungry. I think something's happening here. Yes, ma'am. Yes. To, to keep going. Yes. 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 It's, it's a decision to not be distracted because this, Holy Ghost, help me. God, have mercy. Y'all feel that? Because this is the best life I've ever lived. But it will not stay that way if I don't keep moving forward with it. Because you cannot get back in the river the same place you got out of it. Because the river's moving. Yes, ma'am. Yep. That's right. Right. Which the book says, I got a Bible study brewing about this, so when I teach it, y'all know the rule, act like you never heard of it. <laughs> a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Perfect example. This picture. I thought I wasn't going to be here very long tonight, but I thought wrong. This picture is the way to live if you want to become like Jesus. We got to be led by the Spirit and not the flesh. Because to be led by the Spirit is life and peace. To be led by the flesh is death. That's what the Bible says. You can't change it up and make it any other way. Very good. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a, I don't just feel like I want to gird up my loins. I reach down, I grab that was holding me back, and I put it in a place where it can't come out. Because I've made up my mind. Boy, that crab family sing a song. I'm running on with Jesus. Huh? I'm running on with Jesus, you know. We got to make up our mind. I'm telling you right now, whatever's happening here, I don't ever want it to stop. Huh? Yep. 
Yes. Yep. And it didn't look like there was a Jew. Right, right. So so the process gets me to see a new perspective. You, you know, you just said it, the peace and serenity that comes with the the pursuit of salvation. Yeah. But but if I don't know what that looks like mm -hmm. and if I don't see the incentives of that, I'm gonna keep going back to the Uh huh. So so uh -huh. help me. Uh huh. That's what this scripture. Oh, I was ready to go to work, bro. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Here's where she is. Talk about desire. They are told every tree in the garden have at it, except one. Only one that you can't do. Guess where old Weavy Poo is? Standing at that tree slobbering. Really? Standing there just a slobber. This is what I think what you're saying. And she was in a position because of her desire had moved her into a vulnerable place. And the devil came along and said, what up, sweetie? Oh, look at that tree. I know what God said. He said, don't eat of it. Well, let me tell you what. He just wants to hold you back. That's the best tree in the garden. And he's in the business of just making your life miserable. God lied to you. And she said, I believe I'll eat a fruit. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get to be like God. I'm on the throne now. I get to be like God. Eve ultimately ate of the tree because she wanted to. Her desire made her vulnerable to the enemy's deception. And he painted a picture that linked up with her desire. Yes. So to gird up the loins of my mind and be sober allows me to be realistic about my want to. Which says, remember Paul? I find in a law when I would do good, evil was <laughs> present with me. I know I'm not perfect. And I know I make mistakes, and I promise you, I know what road they live on. And if I'm hanging out at the no-no tree, <laughs> slobbering, my belly's about to be full of the forbidden fruit, and I'm going to bring judgment not just on me, but on generations of my family. Right. You know, I mean, you, you want it, you want it, you ain't got it, and you just keep on getting it all the time. I mean, it, it's just piecemeal when it's screwed over. Except I found out in elements class, was you there Sunday? Yeah. I found out in elements class, I can be full and hungry at the same time, and the only place that happens is in the church. So is it Adam and Eve, is that that whole thing's what you were saying, right? Is my want to gets messed up. I think, friend, I think that's what you were getting at a while ago too. Uh, all of this is ultimately fueled, fueled by my desires. But what I'm doing, Brother Larry, is I am, the truth is it ain't a sin to want the forbidden fruit. It's a sin to start dancing with the devil about it. You know, start playing tiddlywinks with the devil, footsie. Okay, that's where we mess up. Every man sins when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. 
Because all of a sudden, but if I'm praying, hear me now, if I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm staying connected to God, Abide in me. I am the true vine. You are the branches. Where's that at? John 15? Huh? Stay connected to God. And get right. Take this, take this paper home and tape it to your mirror if you have to. Okay? And so gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Let me do the next part. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. Hear me. Hear me when I tell you this. Here's what I wrote down in my notes about this. Hope to the end. That word, that in the original translation, it says fully set your hope. Here's what I called it. All right? Put all of your eggs in one basket. Put all of your eggs in one basket. It's, I, I remember Brother David taught us a lesson. I believe it was Hernando Cortez when he showed up in Florida exploring. He got off the boat. He got all his men off the boat, and he sent four or five fellas back, and you know what he told them to do? Burn them. Why? Ain't going back. I'm, I'm going to eliminate the possibility of going back. I, I feel like this is so powerful. There ain't nothing if we don't make heaven. There ain't no middle road. There ain't no cool place where you're hanging out with 72 virgins and all that other nonsense. Okay? We're going to have a meeting in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who have made themselves ready. A bride prepared for her husband. Holy, clean, Pure, without spot or wrinkle. You can't get that way playing both ends of the stick. you got to put, it's got to be, hear me, heaven or bust. I'm not just on my way to being a good Bible study teacher. That's just part of my journey. I'm on my way to Jerusalem. I'm on my way to that meeting in the air. Whether dead or alive, I'm listening for the trumpet. Like my good friend, Brother Magruder said, to sound most any time. And a crown of life that's waiting. Thank God will soon be mine. I got my invitation at a place called Calvary. And by the precious blood of Jesus, the trip's been paid for me. You've got to put all your eggs in the basket of the revealing of Jesus Christ, the ultimate, the end of our faith when he's coming back for us. Look at this. Still in verse 13, I think. Take me to the next part of it. On, it, on, on. I think it's the next verse, 14. Yes, it is. Now, here's where we don't shout so much. How do you define an obedient child? Does what he's told. That's an obedient child. Take out the trash. Yes, sir. And he takes out the trash. An obedient child. Everybody knows what they are. And everybody knows when they ain't. So those of us that are pursuing this end, Brother Cody, this connection with Jesus Christ, this unbreakable relationship of holiness, we have to gird up the loins of our mind, be sober, hope to the end, put all our eggs in one basket. The end is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the coming of the Lord. As obedient children, you lost me. Here's what's happened in the world. I felt this very powerful in my spirit. We got to make sure it don't happen in the church. I don't know what it looks like, but us parents, I'm saying us, I don't know that it rolls that way at my house. I hope it don't, but if it does, us parents that are letting, excuse me for the reference, the inmates run the asylum are out of order with God. 
And this doesn't mean anything to you if your children run your home. Why ain't y'all shouting? No, really, it's the world we live in now. And the, even the laws say, the law say you, you can't whoop your child. You, you can't do, there's so much nonsense that's been, I prefer not to. I spanked my boys last when they were 14 and 11. And it made me so angry that I grabbed a paddle and I threw it across the house. And I told them, that's it. All right? But the children can't run the home. Because if your children run your home, you think you can run Jesus. You think that's the way it's supposed to be. And the book says, as obedient children, that is children that do what they're told. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't expect it out of our children if we won't do it in the kingdom. Uh huh. It's a glimpse. This is a powerful. This discussion right now is a glimpse into the powerful deception of hell regarding this passage. Here's how you fix this. Simply redefine obedience. Going, the world has went from doing, do exactly as you're told to do what you're told until it intrudes upon what you want. That's the world we live in right now. If it don't make you happy, then we got to reevaluate it. Yeah, not the way it works. Not the way it works. How many times in my own life, it's happened a few times, that you tell your children, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't touch that. Don't stand there or nothing. And they do exactly what you told them not to, and they pay a price for it. And then they say, I'm sorry, Daddy. But the trouble is, like you talked about a while ago, they're only sorry as long as you're upset with them. And then they come back to being on easy street again. They don't forgot. That's what we can't do. We can't. That's what you said, Josh, was so powerful. We can't forget where we were when he found us. We can't forget that we were crying in Egypt. We were begging for help. We didn't have an answer. We can't forget. We can't forget. Did somebody over here have their hand up before I go to? All right. I, I knew you did. And then I got Fran next and then well, Sister Miss Jane. Okay. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll hold that thought. I'm fixing to hit it. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh-huh.
Yeah. Yes. Right. Right, they do. And, and we will too by being irresponsible within our relationship with God by thinking that we can, ah, that ain't that big a deal because we forgot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. We're a long way from the day. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm not God. You're exactly right. But but unfortunately, we sometimes that's the biggest thing we revert back to is is all right, Lord, you helped me when I was all messed up, but I ain't messed up no more. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. It does. And, and the Bible promises that it's going to continue to show. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And all that is is a microcosm of 8 billion people in the world who think fulfillment is out there somewhere. But it ain't. It is not. There's some deep stuff happening in this room tonight. Because we're going to have to begin. I'm, I'm going to touch what Brother Josh said, and then, surprise, we'll have to finish this. Probably be a new handout because I'm going to go on with it. But he said, here's the deal. Before I come to know the Lord, before I come to church, before I got submitted to a pastor who leads me. And before I begin to go to elements and recovery and small groups and different things, before I begin to learn what God wants for me, I lived out there the way I did completely without knowing any better. You know, for instance, uh, look, look at the statistics. Look at the statistics. Let, let's just talk about smoking. Okay, let's talk about smoking. Anybody ever read the statistics about how many people smoke because their parents did and their grandparents did? It's an incredibly high number. Okay, how many pe peer pressure? Okay, but the truth is, you know, uh, we don't need to be. You, you buy something that says, if you smoke this, you probably going to die. I think that's what they say on there. Okay? And, but, but at the risk of, of, you know, getting all muddied up because somebody gets puffed up because they're still struggling with smoking, you know, I mean, there's some folks that can testify in here right now. That, ain't, that don't scare me, does it, Brother Shannon? That don't scare me because I know deliverance is coming. It's coming. You hang around. You hang around the power of the Holy Ghost long enough. You keep pursuing the Lord strong enough. You're going to find yourself not only delivered from Marlboro, you're going to find yourself delivered from bubblegum cigarettes. You're going to find yourself delivered from candy cigarettes. You're going to find yourself delivered from all that stuff. Okay? But my point is, there are many things we do in the world that are okay out there. But they're not in the kingdom of God. Not when I want to be like Jesus Christ. Not when I'm in pursuit of him. But so what happens is, is I come out of that. I didn't know anything. You know, you, you take, a, you take I, I want to say somebody else, but they'll get mad at me. Because Tara don't like me to call her out in front of everybody. So, but let's, let's just take Fran, for instance. She had no kind of a church background. 
All she know, all she's talked about before is all she knew about church is she drove by them once in a while. Is that right? Okay. She didn't know anything about church. Okay. There were things out there that she did that weren't against the law. She didn't know, first of all, she just didn't even really know what God wanted. So as she began to find out, there's changes that are made. So she comes all this way from the streets of Bakersfield. I know it was another place, but that sounds better. <laughs> and then she gets like, church is boring. They've sung that same song five weeks in a row. Do you believe, do you believe they want us to come here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, and we don't get out till almost halftime? <laughs> I just can't do that. Really, I just can't do that no more. So once, there's some powerful truth I'm fixing to throw down, and then we're going to go. When you're born again of the water and spirit, and God changes you and works on you, you've got to change yourself back. Not fashioning yourselves. Based upon your old, ignorant desires. Acting again like you did when you did not know what was pleasing to God. So now that I know, I've decided I got cold in the Lord. I got disconnected. I started finding fault. And the next thing you know, I am making myself back into what I used to be. Yeah. I'm making myself. Yes, ma'am. Yep. That's a great question. You know why? Because you haven't got your mind focused. You're not sober-minded. You are still got that, you still got that picture you cut out of the Sears catalog in 1978 of that red bustier that you want to wear. And you're going to convince yourself that it's all right to let your junk all hang out. I mean, I, I know I'm being a little bit silly, but you see the picture. You, you see the picture that, you know what, what I have to do is I have to go up in there, tear that thing off the wall, wad it up, burn it. There you go. I was thinking that. Set it on fire and say, that desire is dead. Because now I know. Oh, I got a message about that. I'm fixing to cut you loose. But I got a message about that. Woo-wee. Goofy old Naaman, eat up with leprosy. He shows up in Israel, expecting them to do some kind of big old important thing for him. And the prophet says, go dip in the river Jordan seven times. And Naaman said, got me mixed up. He, did. he said, I got way better waters than that. The little servant said, hey, what you got to lose? What you got to lose? Go dip in the muddy water. If you're not healed, what'd you lose? He goes and he dips not once, not twice, not five times, seven times, just like the prophet said. And he come up out of the water and all the leprosy was gone and he had skin like a new baby. And whoo, baby. You talking about preaching right now. And you know what he said? Now I know that there ain't no God like the God in Israel. 
there ain't no God. Come on, Josh. There ain't no God that brings me out of the gutter. And when something big stands in my way that would have knocked me down, I just shook it off, stepped on it, and kept climbing higher because I come too far to turn around and go back now. I know too much to give up. I know too much to try to go back where I was. Stand with me. Lord have mercy. Oh, the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, he'd spent his entire life standing on the sidelines. But God sent a man to minister to him. And he began in the book of Isaiah and preached unto him Jesus. And just a little long down the road in the middle of preaching, they come up on a swimming pool in the middle of the desert. A water hole. And the eunuch said, I love it. Hey, there's water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And they got out of that chariot and they got down in that water because the hindrances were all gone. Ladies and gentlemen, you're on your way. You're on your way. You're on your way. There may be a million reasons why the world has always told you no, but they're one by one falling off as you keep going because the places you're going, the world can't stay on you. It's got to turn loose. The enemy, I've told you all this before, the enemy may be in your ear, he may be in your head, but you begin to move into a place of worship. He ain't got but two options turn you loose and let you go or bow down beside you. Yeah. He's either got to start worshiping or get out of town. Huh? Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for the word, for truth, for the spirit that we feel. Thank you for strength, the power of the Holy Ghost, and the knowledge that we get that you want us to be complete in you, that you got big things for us, big dreams, big visions. Let us learn to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Live in life and peace and joy instead of death. That's our destiny. Let us embrace it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 10 o'clock Sunday morning, Elements class, 11 o'clock worship. See you all there.